so you know in Stranger Things season four when there's like clock that keeps coming over and being like dung, 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 and there's this impending sense that time is passing and something bad is going to happen and it's just like coming in around you. To me, that is how time feels in the ADHD brain. And I want to talk about that today. We're going to talk about time blindness, what it is, um, why it is that way. And more importantly, give you some tips of how you can manage that overarching sense, not even just on the day to day of like missing appointments or struggling to estimate time, but just of like the bigger picture overall longer term projects and goals sense that it is always now or never and the pressure and panic that that brings. I've been in a bit of a tiz recently because I quit my job, I'm leaving next Tuesday and I'm going from my full-time employment into self-employment. I'm so excited. Coaching, YouTubing, all of this, all of the stuff that I love. That's an aside. But I'm in this transitional time at the moment that's like straddling those two things and going into what isn't necessarily like uncertainty, although I guess it is, but it's just like a change. And this is so normal for me. I get into this like weird, tizzy, like paralyzed place because I haven't quite left the thing that is going to stop, but the thing that is going to happen is coming soon but it's not here yet and everything just ends up feeling like big and overwhelming and like it's everywhere and I'm trying to structure and plan my time but it's just like it's almost like you know when you're about to sneeze and you go but the sneeze isn't coming yet so you're like stuck at the top of the sneeze anticipating it and waiting for it to arrive but it isn't so you feel like you're holding your breath and you just want to go that's what it feels like This morning I did a Lego serious play build for myself because I forget that I have all of these tools that are really helpful for me to work through blockers. And there's many different things that are on here. It was so helpful, by the way. I built my problem and then I've moved the pieces around to build my solution. But something that became very obvious to me as I did this build was this. This confusing, tower, looming, overwhelming, abstract essence of time, which feels like it's hanging over everything that I need to do. And I thought, of course, ADHD and time blindness. If you don't know much about time blindness, or probably better term to be honest, time agnosia, so I'm going to refer to it as that from now on, it is the challenge and difficulty in the ADHD brain to perceive the passage of time. There's research ongoing as to why that is the case with for people with ADHD, but something that's pretty well established is that there is an area of the brain that doesn't activate as well in people with ADHD that is responsible for perceiving the passage of time. So neurotypical people have what is termed as an internal clock that's thought to relate to them being able to to unconsciously perceive their pulse rate and judge and see how that relates to time. And that's just not there in the same way with ADHD. And how that shows up, so I'm sure many of you are familiar, it's having real difficulty estimating how long a task takes. For us, it is a much more of an emotional judgment. So things that we don't want to do feel like they're going to take ages and things that we really want to do, we completely overestimate how much we can fit into the time period that we have. So that results in us missing deadlines, getting stressed, feeling that sense of pressure. Time agnosia can also result in us missing appointments or for me being super early for appointments because I get really caught up in trying to figure out and work backwards how much time I'm going to need to travel and to get there and that's a whole thing and it can make it really hard for us to make realistic schedules and stick to those schedules and not completely burn ourselves out. There's something that I've mentioned already which I feel is almost like a bit more intangible than the impact on like missing a deadline or missing an appointment which is just this sense of time and pressure that comes with feeling like everything is now or never. Ned Hallowell, who's really prominent in the ADHD field, describes this really well. He says, time collapses in ADHD. Past, present and future are not distinct and separate from each other. And we experience time as curvilinear. Now, I'm going to save this for a separate video because I don't want to distract from the point of giving you some tips here. But I've done a whole like days of research on this because actually arguably time as a construct in physics doesn't even exist and really it's the perception of time that makes time real so i would argue that actually the adhd experience of time as curvilinear is much more aligned with actually how time works in the universe um i'll save that for a future video because it's a whole thing that i want to go down for now no 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 will, however, use quite a few universe metaphors as I talk through the tips because I just think it's a really helpful way to visualise it and find your way through the chaos. So to bring it to life a little bit, I want to work through a kind of example of that bigger, overarching, longer-term project that creates this impending sense of now or never. But what is it? That is the question. I haven't written it until I got here because I couldn't think of it. So one of the things that I really want to create for the new year, although I think that (laughs) new year timeline is probably wherein lies the issue because adding the timeline has suddenly created a pressure, is a self-paced course or program about ADHD 
and goal setting help you set goals that work for your brain and that curvilinear sense of time and struggle with the linearity that's involved in goal setting. So there's something that I want to do and that I want to create, but I'm here right now. And then the new year is like, ideally when I want it to be ready. And then there's all these things that need to happen in between and all of these things that I want to happen in between. And I'm also having a holiday and I've also leaving my job and I've also got my coaching clients. There's also this other stuff. And so I'm suddenly in this place where I'm like, the walls of pressure are closing in because if I don't do it now, it's not going to happen. It's now or never. And it's not, but it feels like it is. And I'll come back in a minute with some tips of how to manage that. But one of the things that I did and that I've got quite well practiced at is being able to outline all of the things that need to happen for that to be ready. But I don't feel any better, right? Like I understand what those things are without some extra like ways of dealing with it. I then have, yeah, I have a plan, but I'm still don't feel any more relieved that the plan doesn't have to happen right now. I don't know, this might sound really intangible, but it's much more of a sense of closing in pressure than it, it is. It is almost like an explainable thing. Here's how I'm going to manage that. And here's how you can help work through that impending sense of now or never when it comes to longer term projects. Number one, this is going to sound really basic, but honestly, before you do anything else, when you're caught up in feeling that pressure and stress, ask yourself this. Do I need sleep, water, food or a break? Honestly, sometimes when we get so twisted in our heads about pressure and what's going on, and especially with executive functions, I go for a walk. Oh, that's better. I go and eat a snack. Oh, that's better. This isn't going to solve the overall problem, but it might help in the moment if you're in a complete tiz about it to just give yourself what you need to be like, this is not as bad as I thought it was. Two, pause and breathe. Yes, I know. It's annoying when somebody tells you, you just need to take a step back, take a breath, breathing solves everything. It doesn't solve everything, but it creates space. I see this in my coaching clients so much, right? We'll be talking through a plan or a thought or an overwhelm or something. And you, I feel that energy is, it is a stuck in the detail, tense, panic, eh, energy. And I recognize that in myself now as I coach people that like, I, I feel like I'm getting out of breath. And what we both need to do in that moment and this is why having that other person can help you regulate yourself as well, is to just be like, right, let's pause for a minute. Let's take a breath. Just create some space for yourself and just be. It's really hard to make sense of the chaos and details when they're flying at you from all angles. In the moment, if you're really caught up in something, remove yourself from it. Pause, take a breath. Oh, I'll just take my own advice, actually. See, I even feel more relaxed at the minute. I'm not sure I can continue the video with the same amount of vivacious vigor. A brief interlude to bring you the sponsor of today's video. That's right, we be sponsoring. We got it. Who is it, you might add? Well, it's little old me. Is that how this works? Can I sponsor my own videos? I don't know. If you can't back yourself, who's going to back you? That's all I'll say. (laughs) You may have meant, you may have heard, you may have heard in my last tip, I talked about working with my coaching clients. I'm very excited to announce that I, as I am now working for myself and doing all of the things that I love and want to do, focusing right now on one-to-one private ADHD coaching clients. I will put some links and information in the description if you are interested in working with me. I have three client spots left for November of this year and I am, I mean I'm not going to use this space now to gush about it too much, but honestly I coached before I got my ADHD diagnosis. I'm coaching now after my ADHD diagnosis. A huge part of this for me and the reason why I've been able to go self-employed has been building this community on YouTube and that's not me, that's that's you guys being here validating me, making me feel like I'm not just talking into the abyss and um, connecting with people that get it and I'm really excited to do more of the things that I love and know that I'm good at with the people that I know I can help. So if you are looking for an ADHD coach, think that I might be the one for you check out the link in the description. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. Point three, when you're stuck feeling like it's now or never and you don't know where to start, externalize 
everything that is in your head. Now, this can sometimes feel overwhelming, especially if you're not in the routine of doing it, but trust me, it feels so less overwhelming out of it than it is inside of it. The way that I think about it is like, if you're an astronaut and there's meteorites flying all around you and you're just in your in your suit, like floating through the universe with everything from all directions in zero gravity, it's really hard to like grasp and hold on to something. And it's also really hard to have a clear visual as to what you're working with. Pausing, breathing, and then externalizing everything is like you've put on your little moon boots, you've gravitated yourself onto a solid surface. And rather than everything whizzing around while you're whizzing around, you're just able to look around at all of the pieces that are there. It can feel overwhelming to see it all, but at least it's static and it's not just flying at you from all angles inside your own head. Ways you can do that, writing it down. I'm a huge mind mapper. Doesn't have to be a list. It doesn't have to be linear. In my opinion, the less linear, the better. Poo, 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 poo. Mind map it everywhere. Speak it out loud. Working with a coach, honestly, think is one of the best ways to do this because you get to externalize it with somebody that is then there to catch it and to help you group it into little areas, reflect it back and make sense out of it. My fourth tip when you are feeling the overwhelming sense of now or never is to find space in your day. When your perception of time is challenging, overstructuring yourself is problematic because it's really hard sometimes to just sit down and go, great, I've got a 30 minute or a one hour gap to do that thing, so I'll just do it in that time. But then you've underestimated it and it either feels like it's gonna take way longer or it does actually take way longer. And it just adds to that sense of feeling hemmed in. If I've got a bigger longer term project that I'm working on and I need to make sense of all the pieces, I try and find a really good chunk of time, like a whole day. I know we all don't have the luxury of that, but a whole day, a half day, a two hours, but you don't give yourself a specific outcome, but you just let it flow out of you. Honestly, having the space to let it just do, 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 and trust that you will get somewhere and it doesn't matter where you get to, the process is helpful, really just makes such a difference to calming that sense of pressure that you've got to get it done right now. I think my numbering system might be off because I wrote down number six and then I did it as number one. But hey, what is time? What is numbers? Oh no, I've just missed one. So I think we're back on track. Two more. This is one that I've been learning more recently um, and that I'm finding very helpful, but I have to consciously remind yourself, myself and yourself. Always, 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 always question your perception of time. Doubt yourself. This is the one area of your life where I will say, doubt yourself. If you think it's going to take three hours, question that assumption. If you think it's going to take 30 minutes, question that assumption. I'm resisting deep diving because I there's so many sub tips that I could give you for each of these points. So if there are any that you're like, yeah, but how do I do that, Rach? Let me know in the comments and I'll do some future videos that kind of talk through them in more detail. But for this one, I just think go in with the assumption that you're wrong about your time and be open to the possibility that it's not what you expect it's going to be. And a question you could ask yourself could just be, what would be different if I was wrong about how long I think this is going to take? And finally, take time out of the equation. Now, there's lots of places where this just isn't possible, right? If you're working on a work project that's got a timeline, you've got a deadline, there's various pieces that need to happen before you get to it. You can't just say, well, just take time out of the equation because you won't meet the deadline. But there are some areas of your life, for example, personal goals, where time actually isn't really that important. For example, when I'm working with my coaching clients and they've got a personal goal that they're working towards, I don't ask the question, what do you want to have achieved in a month's time? Or where do you want to get to in three months time? Because when you add a timeline on it, as somebody that time is a mystery, it adds this weird and confusing pressure of not knowing how much can get done in that time, what that's going to look like, what's a reasonable breakdown. It's like, what? Instead, I ask questions like, how do you want to feel? What do you want to have achieved? Because for lots of us, it's not about how much we get done or what we get done within a specific time period. It's about general things that we want to have or want to feel like or want to be in our lives. And a lot of the time, it doesn't even, it doesn't matter how long it takes. It takes as long as it takes, as long as we feel like we are making incremental progress towards that goal. Similarly though, I'd also challenge you on the things that you do have timelines for, and I'm thinking this as I work through it now, play with removing the timeline, right? Yes, if you've got a deadline for a work project, you can't ignore time in it, but just as a bit of an experiment for yourself, take out the deadline and then see how you would approach it 
if there wasn't this impending sense of the thing that needs to happen by a certain time. If that creates a sense, as I'm sure it will in a lot of cases of like, yeah, but it's all got to happen now, just remind yourself, remember, to pause, to take a breath, to realise that things don't have to be now or never. They feel like now or never, but they're never now or never. That sounds meta. So when you get caught up thinking about something that you want to do as a project or maybe a work deadline that you're working towards and it feels like everything is closing in on you, it's now or never, your perception of time is just like, what is going on? The impending doom of the Stranger Things clock is ticking in your ear. Remember these things. Make sure that you've slept, eaten, had a rest, drank water. Pause. Take a breath. Create space for yourself in your body, but also in your day externalize everything that is in your head whether that's in a written or in a spoken format always doubt your time perception and question whether your sense of it or whether the time that you've estimated is accurate or not and play with taking time out of the equation and see what you would do differently if you didn't have that impending sense and pressure of the ticking mystery of time that is all for today's video. I release videos every Sunday. I'll be honest, I've been quite stressed about the fact that I haven't for the last few weeks because I've been in this weird holding pen of time. Um, but part of that for me, and maybe this is another lesson for you, is realizing that I actually don't physically have enough time at the moment to do all the things that I wanna do. And I hate that and I resist it. And I plan my time as if that's just, like, I just ignore it. I do that point that's like, question your time perception and then I choose to ignore it. But we're on a learning curve and part of that learning for me might be skipping some of my videos at the moment which I don't want to do but I've got a holiday coming up I'm changing my jobs you got to give yourself grace and I'm hoping that by giving myself grace I'm also giving all of you permission to give yourself grace as well um I'm still around time is curvy linear I'm in your past present and future and I'll catch you soon <laughs>